Hey, I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation, and today on Habitat Hints, I'm going to talk with MDC expert Ben Dickman on the importance of getting rid of that invasive Cerecia lepidiza. We're going to talk about how you can do that and what you can do and so much more. Let me turn this around and we'll talk with Ben. Hey Ben, so tell us about Cerecia and why this invasive species is so bad here in the state of Missouri. So Cerecia lepidiza um, is a, is a non-native um, competitor here. We're staying in a CRP planting um, that's pretty rich with diversity in different forbs and warm season grasses. Um, Cerecia lepidiza is an introduced species originally thought to be good forage, um, erosion control, and wildlife food. It's proved to be none of that. Um, and the reason it becomes a real issue um, is it forms dense stance of monocultures uh, that outcompete most of our native species. Um, it's allelopathic, so it secretes a, a chemical that, that weeds out surrounding competition. Um, so that's the main reason and why we're, why we're treating it in, in this setting, um, especially. You can see in here we have some indigo and other forbs mixed in throughout. Um, so our, our goal here is to, to rid the cerise out of this planting help promote the, the growth of our forb species. Um, and there's multiple ways of kind of treating it. Here, it's been treated with Remedy or Pasture Guard over um, usually during this time period of July up until it goes, starts flowering um, late August, early September. Um, Pasture Guard and Remedy is a triclopyr pure product. Um, there's another chemical that you can use once it starts flowering later into the summer, um, usually around the September time frame, um, Escort XP. Um, is the brand name of that and it's a metasulfron methyl is the chemical in that um, So varying the timing of treatment can help with things um, as well as as um, Endured cost, but in this situation we try our best to come in here and do some spot spraying So that's targeted on these clumps because some of those chemicals mentioned they will harm the forbs as well So where we can we'll uh, we'll target just clumps try to avoid spraying and hitting off-target species um, but oftentimes, especially in like warm season grass fields where the, where the chemicals are broadleaf selective, we can come through and do some broadcast spraying. Um, and it, it would certainly, uh, is, is a route to go when the infestation is a major problem. So when you're talking about spraying, I mean, we're in a pretty large field right now, but what are for those landowners at home that may have this popped up in a smaller field? Is it very simple as spot spraying or is there other things they can do? So if you have like a small backyard type pollinator planting, or even, I mean, this stuff's gonna show up kind of anywhere that's been disturbed or has made its way in. Um, in small places, you can certainly throw on a backpack sprayer, um, go by the label for the spot treatment of that and walk through to a grid, grid search of it. Um, even on larger scales when you're doing spot treatments, um, a 25 gallon tank on the back of a four wheeler and a grid pattern checkerboard across these larger expanses. Um, likely that's what the landowner's been utilizing here. So. What else is, uh, where would you recommend where they can get more information about what they should spray on Cerecia? Um, is, can you find that on our website? Yep, so you can visit uh, mdc.mo.gov. There'll be a tab on there for invasive species and there's certainly best uh, management practices on there. Okay. Or reach out to your local contact, your local Missouri Department of Conservation PLC or your local NRCS office will have more answers well, for you. All right, I really appreciate it, Ben. And I'm gonna echo what he said. You can get on our website at mdc.mo.gov and search for your private lands conservationists and they can help you out. Very as simple as that. You all have a great rest of the day.